your neighbors must love you. Yeah, not so much. Good morning, Wackadoo Racing Channel. Welcome back. It is a beautiful Saturday morning. We're gonna see if we can't get something done on this thing. Now, while today it is beautiful, the beginning of the week was not the case. Uh, we had crazy windstorms, so California Edison doing what California Edison do, went ahead and shut off my power for two days because public safety or something like that. But I wasn't able to get quite as far on this as I wanted to. However, I did make a little bit of headway a little bit later in the week, and a bunch of those parts that I was talking about previously showed up. So I don't have a huge amount of time today, so I'm gonna see what I can get done. I should have a little bit of help showing up here soon, but let me show you what I got what showed up, what we're gonna be working on, and we'll see if I can knock out a couple of them today. So my help is here for the day. So this is Wyatt, you've not met Wyatt yet. Wyatt and I go way back. He's gonna be helping me out today. He's also gonna be working on his own YouTube channel here in the near future, so look forward to that. He's also the guy that helped me and was able to make it possible for me to build the motor that is in Project Cerberus, that nasty small block 406 very much in part to this guy who walked me through the entire process and built my first motor with me. So, great place in my heart, this fellow right here. Today, I've got him for a couple of hours. I'm gonna put his ass to work. So let me show you what we got, where it's gotta go. A, a couple of these things were supposed to be really short-term, small projects that were supposed to be a, a quick, fun one so that I had like a, 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 a bit of a morale boost on the fact that I'm, I'm still picking away at the floor and stuff like that. We're getting there. I still gotta hang the doors. All the hard work still has to happen. And I wanted these small morale booster type projects. And it turns out a bunch of them showed up and they're, they're gonna be like full projects in themselves. Let me explain. So one of the things that I wanted to do that was just kind of a styling point for the truck and kind of a step away from that body work was I wanted to do heat extractor vents on the hood. It'll look cool. It'll help get some of that heat dissipated from the engine bay. And I like the look. So these ones are some that I ordered. These are actually, I ended up liking these better than the ones I originally ordered. The ones I originally ordered were never gonna ship because they were actually from a country that is currently under COVID lockdown. So I got an email telling me they weren't coming. But these ones are gonna look like this when done. And they're gonna end up going somewhere in this vicinity. And while I'm really excited about the fact that these are gonna look really cool when it's done, the heat dissipation is the main thing. Now, I'm kind of putting this project off for one reason. I'm working on getting a thermal camera right now and I'd really like to see the difference between heat dissipation before and after adding these louvers. So I think I'm gonna have to hold off on this even though this is gonna be the most fun project of the several that I got going on at the moment. But I really think it's gonna be worth it in the end for you guys to see how much heat actually travels out of these things when it's at an idle condition and fully warmed up. What do we have here? The front fiberglass visor finally showed up. I managed to get this one through Summit Catalog and it's actually a great fit. The, I can go ahead and put a part number if somebody's looking for this one, but it fits very nicely. And after a little bit of debate on whether or not I wanted to do a cab on the truck, the first time that I sat in it with a little bit of dirt on the windshield on a sunny day, I realized exactly why all of these square bodies end up with a visor at some point, particularly if they're doing work on long road trips. Because of the long angle of the windshield and the tall height of it, you end up catching sunlight pretty much all the time. So even for myself who sits very high in the truck because I'm very tall, uh, I still end up with just massive amount of uh, dead space above me where I can just see daylight. And on a long drive through the desert, that's gonna be miserable. So we went ahead and got the visor. Uh, I've fallen in love with the cosmetic of it. So it's gonna look great when it's done. Hopefully we're gonna get that trimmed up pretty quick, get it mounted up and primered. So originally you're telling me you're pretty excited about this cab wing, but then when it showed up, tell me that you weren't too excited about it. Tell me about that. So these cab wings are actually relatively difficult to get your hands on. There's not a lot of manufacturers or companies that are remanufacturing this wing for this truck. Um, I like the aesthetic of it, and ultimately it's going to help to disrupt the turbulent air behind the cab and make it so that we're not getting as many rock chips and things like that on the car that ends up on the back. And it might actually marginally increase gas mileage, although that's not one of the main points of why I wanted it. However, with the lack of companies that I had to choose from, I was forced to go with one that sells out of Canada, sells on eBay, and generally speaking, I'm not impressed with the fitment of the unit when it arrived. However, I don't think it's their fault. After finding more pictures like this one of an original cab spoiler 
that was manufactured probably in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, I find that it actually fits very similarly slash poorly the way that this one does. And the main thing that needs to be addressed is here at the cab corner, we have a bad misalignment to the corner here where the wing actually sits. Now here on the back, it's already pushed all the way forward. Obviously it's just sitting on top of it, but you can see that it's already pushed forward enough that it's touching off of here and we still don't line up here. I've heated it up with a heat gun and tried putting more pressure on it. And I was able to close up the gap most of the way, but not enough that I could actually put this thing on and say that it was done. So we're gonna end up probably doing a whole video on just cutting this, reforming some of it and getting it properly mounted. It was gonna be a quick project. It turned into a long one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on a back burner for now. And you'll see that in a later episode. But I'm really excited about having it on the truck. Just not the part where I have to do any work to get it mocked up. <laughs> Okay, guys so on the floor here we're making very slow progress it's the same thing it's been this entire time it's just tiny tiny little patch panels being cut in and formed by hand to fit in two tiny little spots that you'll never see that'll be covered in carpet and nobody will ever notice but they have to be right the first time or it'll happen again so it's tedious it's slow and it sucks however that being said Wyatt is killing it there is a couple of problems though all the wires were ran directly through the cab roof, so they were being cut by the sheet metal and were prone to grounding out, which will probably end up, if they were probably unfused because this guy was an idiot, uh, either melting some wiring, burning down the whole truck, or who knows what else. Do you want to save your electrical tape from your bare wire wrap? Electrical repairs? I digress. It appears this truck was a factory blue, which is uh, new information for us. We didn't know that. Everything I've seen so far was uh, cheap primer black. So we're actually seeing the original color here, and we don't have any rust underneath the lights, which is a freaking fantastic thing. Uh, he was able to remove the rivets and... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that, the wires are way too short, even if they hadn't been run through the sheet metal in a way that was going to cause electrical issues anyways. I already plan on doing a bunch of uh, preemptive wiring on this thing. I'm leaving things that I'm installing that require rewiring unwired so that I can do everything in sections. I want to do kind of a front half in the cab. I'm not wiring these things as I go because the wiring is such a jumbled mess on this truck that adding to the jumbled mess is gonna create a problem. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna end up going with an entirely new wiring harness or just new fuse box. What I, what I have to do is gonna come down to logistics later when I get a really good chance to look at it and decide what's gonna work best for this project. But right now, we're gonna put the cab lights back on the roof, run the wires through, leave everything mocked up and unpowered, get them in place, and then I can make a small sub harness once I've isolated all the wiring through the roof so that it doesn't cut the wires, doesn't ground out, doesn't create an electrical fire later, and then I can focus on running that to where the power source was coming from. At least then I know that some of it will be safe. I can at least put a fuse on my side of what I did so we can look at it. We're gonna drill out all these rivets. We're gonna finish getting these holes all mocked up. We're gonna get the seals in place. We're gonna put the lights down. We're gonna prime over some of this crap so it doesn't rust again. And then we can move forward from there. That's it. <laughs> We've got, I mean, something as simple as cab lights should not be. Should not be this strenuous. It shouldn't be this hard. Don't be an idiot. We're kind of dealing with that. Uh, it, you see why these things take longer than I anticipate? Like I'm not, I'm not trying to jump in all these little projects because this kind of stuff happens every freaking time. Uh, swapping cab lights should have been two bolts a piece and then just connect the wiring and now we're, we've got a wiring project and then sheet metal project, so. Are you gonna go back to show after flooring so I can get some work done? No, screw that. I'm, I'm gonna ignore this whole 
<laughs> Nobody even likes seeing that. It sucks. You're doing a great job, though. You're preventing, you're preventing a fire. That's it. So go make some. We're moving along. Let's keep doing it. <laughs> So far, what we've had to do is hand make ourselves a panel. And that is definitely not easy to do. So we finished trimming out all along here, and then we had to trace this whole panel out, get it all tack welded into place, and that is not a flat panel. So we had a lot of hand crafting to go ahead and get done there. Looking pretty good. We're moving forward there, slow but steady. What's going on on the roof? The roof was actually a little more time consuming than we were expecting. It took a lot of sand work. There was a lot of rust work. A lot of the holes were pulled on up. So we got that all prepped. Our next step is we're gonna go ahead and primer it all off, just from a mock-up standpoint to have some, some prep work down. A little bit of rust prevention. And then on top of that, we're gonna go ahead and feed in all of our lights today and get them down. But once again, this is all strictly for mock-up. It's not a final product yet. Let's go ahead and get those lights mocked up. Uh, get, get on it. What are, oh. what are you doing? Why are you standing around? Jesus! What we got done is we got the primer all down. We got everything mocked on up. We went ahead and drilled all of our holes. We got everything mounted down. We've got the electrical ran on through, so that way we'll be able to get her all wired in, done right the first time. But anytime that you do anything right the first time, it takes time. On our next endeavor, we're gonna go ahead and haul out the middle of this, make it be able to fit on up in there, get all the work down, button it up nice and true, but no, you don't get to see it done today. So what he's saying is, here in the center of this unit for the model that I bought, there is a recess for the cab light. These cab lights are a little bit longer, so we need to extend this recess, cut it out. I've got primer that's gonna match the rest of the truck before we mock it up, but generally speaking, let's go ahead and hack it. Boom. It's gonna go somewhere in this vicinity. We need to prep the area of landing where it's gonna end up, and we need to make sure that there in the middle where the cab light is going to be interfering, it's trimmed out to fit accordingly. However, we have it. It fits pretty good. A little bit of trimming is not a big deal comparatively to the nightmare that's going to be that freaking cab wing. Uh, but I mean, I, I feel pretty damn good about it. Oh. Visitor. More friends. Hang on. Why? What, what is this? 1968 Chevy El Camino with the original 327. And this is this is a hot 327, yeah? Uh, yeah, it's factory. She's she's a little hot. We done a little bit of extra tour. Is that some 1.6 roller rockers? You got a you got a you got a cam and a punch on it, yeah? I got a cam and a punch. Uh, she's 60 over. That kind of bad punch, but just a, just just a little 60 over punch. <laughs> and what, what transmissions in this rig? Uh, we got the Muncie four-speed. She uh, not as pretty today as I'd like her to be, but she gets the fun done. But she boot scoots and she boogies. That's it. This right here might potentially end up being something you see relatively often. Because there's been talk about making this car a pre-runner. There's been talk about making this car an autocross car. There has been all kinds of talk. Ultimately, this car has been around the block. He gets it done. Wyatt's got to roll out. I appreciate his help today. How was it? It was fabulous. I'm glad to be with you guys today. Let's get you on your way. Alrighty. Thank you for helping me out.
one of our old buddies here. What's, What's up? What's up? Gone. So he swung by and he happens to have the freshest NA that I've ever seen. And he is actually one of the key motivators for why I ended up doing the Miata swap in my car. So he has spent a lot of time around my place over the years and in time I fell in love with Miatas and their dynamics because of Andy himself. So Andy, what is your social media tag? Where can they find you? Uh, you're gonna just gonna have to say it, and I'll put yeah, it. I'll put in the link. Just right through. It's a uh, pineapple in your butt. Uh, pineapple you in your butt. Yeah, pineapple in your butt. Pineapple in your butt on Instagram. So I've had it for about four, ongoing four and a half, five years. Um, got it completely stock been doing a lot of research of what I want to do in terms of parts performance uh, mainly just keeping the Miata a Miata versus power and handling so over the years I've gone through different types of suspension uh, I tried naturally aspirated uh, manifold intake manifold intake headers uh, so finally decided to go the big boy route um, Suspension's been big boy, so let's take a look at it and see what you guys think. <laughs> Andy drives his car like a freaking savage. Look at his Instagram. He goes through all the beautiful California stuff, Angeles Crest, Ortega, and oh, yeah. up through all of our mountain ranges. You'll, you'll recognize him based on the highway tags he uses. He's a savage. He drives like a savage. Guy can drive. <laughs> Why he's not at the track with us, I don't know. That's true. We'll That's find true. out soon enough. Maybe yeah. we can convince him by harassing him via social media. Yeah. Oh, man. Show us what you got going on, Andy. All right, What's so start off right here. Um, got the whole Skunk 2 throttle body combo with a manifold. Uh, only reroute, keeping me out of radiator. And as you can see, grand prize right here is a full fly me out of turbo kit. Stock boost, not ECU tune. Suspension, finally upgraded to fly me out of Fox coilovers. 949 racing wheels, uh, Nito, NT01 front. R1R Toyo's in the rear. Um, so it doesn't lose really traction at all. As you can see, he heard, I do drive like a beast, so I need the stickiness. This is a, <laughs> this is a sticky car. I've yeah. not seen much of it since it got uh, this little thing right here. Uh, kind of gonna run it for now how it is. Um, it's a good amount of power, obviously, for the four years that I've had it just stock. So maybe in a couple of months or so, depending how I feel, I'll get a computer or something, injectors. Is any ballpark where you think you're sitting right now, where, where you potentially are sitting? Because you're on stock ECU tune, right? Where it's, it's using, mm -hmm. And are you up on injector or anything like that? Uh, it's got a it's got the fly me out of Voodoo Box, so just max out your stock injectors. So the kit probably pushes around 175 to 180 around there. I'm pretty sure it's around there. Yeah, I'm surprised this guy said uh, it's a little, motivation for his triumph and that thing that thing's a beast so <laughs> this thing against it on the track maybe one day <laughs> so there you have it now the motivation here is we gotta we gotta try and get andy to go do a track day with us look forward to seeing andy's built at pineapple in your butt on instagram <laughs> in the near future yeah. hopefully we'll see him again soon yeah well, for now we're done that's it <laughs> i'm gonna try and get something done during the week and hopefully, I'll show you guys something more complete on Saturday next week. For now, Wackadoo out.